What if Armaldo was in Gen 1 OU? Yesterday evening, I made a poll asking which do you guys want to see first, Vespa Quinn or Armaldo? Both of them are going to be in Generation Jumbo Season 2, and both are the ones I'm looking most forward to. And with 95 of you voting, you guys, for the most part, voted for Armaldo. And first off, let me just say, 95 people in less than 24 hours? What the heck? I... I don't know how, like, so many of you watch these videos. It's just a video of a guy just rambling at a microphone unscripted. But I'm glad you guys are based, because this guy, well, he's adorable. And poor Armaldo never really had a chance to shine in the actual game. Or at least becomes the competitive. Which isn't entirely true. For Gen 3 OU, he has some interesting tools. He has both knockoff and he has rapid spin. Just one problem. You can't use both of them on the same set, which is really annoying. I guarantee you he would actually have a really good OU niche if you can use both. Because then he would be a pretty good utility Pokemon. But luckily, in Gen 1, he has a very interesting type. In fact, I'd even argue, like, in modern day, his type's pretty interesting. And super good news for Armaldo, Bug is actually a really good defensive type in Gen 1. The only problem is, there's only one Pokemon that can use it, and that's Pinsir. Because what else do you have? Butterfree, Venomoth, like, nothing that really takes, like, advantage of it. And then Beedrill and Scyther are just, like, absolute garbage. But, Amaldo also gets to be the rock type, which, as all of you know, resists, uh, what's it called? Normal, which is pretty good. But for those of you who have seen my videos on steel types or on fellow rock types, you already know that just resisting normal is not good enough. Or I guess it's more accurate to say it's only half the story, because every single row of a normal type probably has ground coverage. But luckily, that's where Amaldo shines in. With the bug type, Earthquake is just neutral. If a Pokemon like Tauros and Snorlax, a neutral Earthquake doesn't hurt that much. And speaking of Tauros, what are some of its coverage options? It has Blizzard for Rhydon, but it's Rock Bug type. It's not weak to Ice. It has Thunderbolt for Cloyster, which again, Amaldo doesn't care about. And its last coverage move is usually Fire Blast. And Fire Blast? Like, don't get me wrong, the burn's annoying, but... Like, that's a case where the Rock type actually helps your Bug typing, so you only take it neutrally. And if Armando is paralyzed, it doesn't care about Fire Blast either. Have we ever had a Pokemon that can just check pretty much all of Tauros' coverage moves? And like, don't get me wrong, obviously it's still a Tauros, it can still crit, so it's not like I'm gonna put Tauros in good matchups or anything. Well, that alone just shows just the strength that Armalto has. Not even looking at its stats. 125 attack is only a little bit lower than Rhydon. Same with its defense at 100. So already it's pretty bulky. And 70 is really the same special as Tauros. But I'm pretty sure Armalto doesn't have any noteworthy special moves. But I guess we'll look through it real quick when I, you know, talk about the moveset. And 45 speed means you're faster than... Yeah, you're only faster than... Uh, what's it called? Swilbro and Snorlax. You're the exact same speed as Rhydon. So that, I would say, is Armaldo's biggest flaw. Because yes, it's Gen 1. Not only is everything just naturally bulkier. And not only are things getting paralyzed anyways. But... Being slower than Pokemon like Chansey and Executor, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And I think especially for Chansey's case, being slower than her, I think it's the reason why that matchup, I think, is a could go either way. Because Paralysis is annoying for a model too. Definitely the best status you can have, but I've made enough of these replays to tell you Armaldo really doesn't like it when it loses a turn, which Paralysis is really good at doing, but I guess it would rather that than Freeze or Sweep. 
So its stats are good. Its typing is very good. Kind of wish it can actually use its ability. Because imagine how funny it would be if Armado had battle armor. If there was like a like tier or like a custom like mod for Gen 1 where you had abilities. Or it's like almost any ability. A part of me almost feels like battle armor might be really good there. But I'm not sure. But going on with its moveset though. The moves Armado has are really good. Um, especially for the time. Body Swim is reliable as ever. Double Edge, if you want more attack, but like, it's not really gonna do much. Earthquake, I'm gonna say it's its main attacking move. Because obviously, it has Stab Rock Slide. But I'm pretty sure when I looked at the damage calc, Earthquake I think does more. But someone can correct me on that if I am wrong. Doesn't really matter though, because both Rock Swide and Earthquake for Gen 1 is literally perfect coverage. And it has Sword Stance. Once again, I'm gonna say it, this is now the best Sword Stance user in Gen 1 OU. I'm probably gonna keep saying that until the day I die, or until I've covered all 1000 Pokemon that are, that are like, um, in Gen 1 OU. I'll do that when I'm like, I don't know, I'll probably be like 35 when that happens. But Rock Slide, along with Sword Stance and Earthquake, is really good. In fact, I'll say really, really good. Especially when you have a great defensive typing and bulky stats. For its last move, like, yeah, Body Slam, which, honestly, now that I think about it, might be the more preferred option because it can prayer paralyze stuff, which in turn, you know, helps Armaldo with its speed problem. But funny enough, it also gets Slash, which I know, 45 speed, it doesn't get an auto crit, but I'm pretty sure with how it works, even though it's not super fast, like, Slash still has a high crit rate anyways, so I think it's still more likely than average to get a crit. But someone needs to, like, or that you don't have to, but I'm pretty sure someone in the comments probably knows, like, what the exact percentage would be for a model to crit. But I'm gonna say it doesn't matter. Because I think... Uh, also Hyper Beam, obviously. But like, everything is Hyper Beam. So I think for the best Armaldo set, I think your final move should either be Body Slam or Rest. Because Armaldo is, like I said, really tanky with its typing and stats. But you don't have recovery. Which really does suck, since... Even though your defense and your HP is only a little bit worse than right on, unfortunately your HP is not. You really wish you had like 105 in HP. Which 75 is still good. I'd say that's like average. But sometimes you can definitely feel like uh you like uh, taking more damage than you wish you should. But on the bright side, at least Armado can actually, you know. Uh, tank special moves a lot better than Rhydon can. Especially since he's not even weak to grass. Not like it comes up a lot, but I do find it amusing how the only weakness these guys really have in common is just water. So, unless your opponent plans on using, like, Surf Stormy, what does Armada Roe really have to fear? I. Or. Um, I was gonna say, like, uh, what's it called? Swellbro, but that's a unwinnable situation regardless of what move it's using. So I don't really want to count that. So I guess that just means the only thing Armado has to fear is right on its rock slide, since that's the only thing you're realistically gonna maybe say in against. And that seems pretty fair. I think I've talked on along long enough, so we'll just get on to the replays, shall we? Starting off with the boy himself, Tauros. An Earthquake does, like, not a lot of damage. I was actually surprised to see that I could very easily just go for a Sword Stance. And Earthquake with a Sword Stance is a 2 KO. Which is good. The Crit Blizzard's a little less good. But... This is another thing that I think will help Armaldo a lot. Now both Rhydon and Armaldo are pretty good late game cleaners when most of your opponent's team is paralyzed. But Armaldo... I think of every single Sword Stance user, 
is probably the one that I can use the most often. Even with Pokemon like Kingor and Pinsir and Sandslash, they hit really hard. But I think especially for Kingor's case, it's kind of dangerous. But you need to be like, very careful to actually pull it off. Even though Armado doesn't like Paralysis, because it suffers a lot if it loses a turn, it's not like Chansey where like you don't care too much. But I will say, at the bright side, it's very slow anyways, so it's not like you were outspeeding your opponent in the first place, which I definitely think helps. And Snorlax, I want to say it depends on the set, but I think no matter what, Armado probably has it. I want to say the most dangerous set is Amnesia, and I think technically Reflect Wax is the most annoying, but I feel like for most Reflect Wax, you can use Slash if you really want to, but if not, Sword Stance can eventually overpower, and while getting a few Amnesias up means that, okay, yeah, like Ice Beam can do a lot of damage to you, as you can see there, in a more realistic scenario, Snorlax won't have enough time to set up Amnesia just because Armaldo will just need one Sword Stance to do a lot of damage to you. A little bit different if you have Reflect, but also like this was a Reflect Wax that had like no recovery, needed Reflect and Amnesia. It, it's not a really good set, just something I made for the sake of showing you guys a replay of the Snorlaxes that theoretically can give Armaldo the most trouble. But most of the time you're not gonna have like that hyper specific set and I think for the vast majority of Snorlax sets would it be like all out normal attack self-destruct Armaldo has it and it's worth to say but I can't really say the same thing for Chansey but maybe that's because I made three replays and all three of them had Armaldo suffering horrible paralysis luck but I feel like since Chansey is faster it makes being able to set Thunder Wave when you're more relevant because for most attackers that, like, you know, do really good against Chansey. Normally, at the very least, they can get one attack in, and then Chansey can heal, and that gives them a chance for a free sword stance. But Chansey's already faster, which means there's already, like, a 25% chance that you can not even move. And if Chansey starts attacking you before you even get a sword stance up, as you saw in this replay, it can get really bad very quickly. So, I wouldn't have expected a sword stance using the struggle against Chansey, but definitely makes Armaldo the most unique sword stance user I've covered in a while. And Alakazam. I feel like he probably wouldn't even bought the Clinker Paralysis, so maybe it was a replay. Or not a replay, a misplay. It's probably better just to try to go for crit psychics. And even then, it's not guaranteed, because without a crit, as you see there, it's a 3 hit KO. But then again, Armaldo, uh, I would imagine needs to do, like, I think you need Sword Stance to, to KO it, right? I could be wrong. But let's see here, how much was it doing again? It was doing, I wonder if that's so many crits with its replay, it's insane. It's only base 45 uh, speed. I don't know what happened there. But moving on, Poister. Just like with some of the other mods I cover, like Gengar and Jinx. It just sits there and it's very annoying. But that's when I was like, okay, obviously Armaldo is going to suffer against a Pokemon faster than it with Super Effective Clamp. Also, fun fact, not sure how, but a Critical Clamp 2 hits Armaldo. I think that's very sad. And that doesn't sound like it should do that, but it does. But then I was like, okay, what if the Armaldo is... Or not the Amardo. What if the Poister is paralyzed? Because for the Mon I covered, you know, a few days ago, Tyranitar, it kind of struggles against Coister, but it does do significantly better when the Coister is paralyzed. It's unfortunately not the same thing here, which I hate to say. So, like, I also wasn't really sure any other way to get it paralyzed. I just did this. But ignore that. Poister, contrary to popular belief, will not have Precipice Blades for a Generation Drop of Season 2. But if this video gets, I don't know, if it gets like 
2,000 views. I will give <laughs> quite suppressive of its plates. It will be base. And I'll also confirm that it will also get a Mega Evolution in Pokemon Legend ZA. We saw there, a model did better, but at 22 HP, I can't really say it, it was an easy fight. Armaldo would just easily get revenge killed. I'm just gonna say no matter what, Cloyster is a pretty bad matchup. Granted, if it's paralyzed and you have a sword stance up, obviously you're gonna win that pretty easily. But at that point, that just seems more like you just being at a good position and nothing else, at least in my opinion. Didn't bother with Jinx, but you can probably imagine how that goes. It either puts Armado to sleep or gets Oka by Rock Slide. And Executor. I, I think with this one, because your only real moves are Rock Slide and maybe Bonnie Slip on Hyper Beam, I'm gonna say that even with a Sword Stance, your matchup against Executor is really bad. I'm sure a Sword Stance boosted Rock Slide is gonna do a lot of damage, but again, Executor is faster, so you're probably not even going to hit it in the first place, which sucks. But at least, unlike Rhydon, you theoretically can do damage to it. Speaking of Rhydon, you can't set up a Sword Stance, unfortunately. And unlike Rhydon, you cannot 2-hit KO it, you can only 3-hit KO it. Meaning that Rhydon can kill you pretty quickly. I do wonder though, if just like with Tyranitar and Rhydon, I wonder if Armando and Rhydon is a viable strategy. It's obviously pretty different, because Tyranitar can actually cover for Rhydon's weaknesses entirely. Rhydon is scared of the Psychics, which obviously Tyranitar handles, and the electric tips that are annoying Rhydon handles, and then you just add Starmie to that trio just to, you know, fix everything, or fit it all together, I mean. Not really the same with Armando, I don't think. Both are good defensively, and both would definitely mean that like, normals are just not going to get an opening with you. But then the psychics can kind of just eventually overpower you without Chansey or Psychic type of your own. Not to mention, since both of them kind of want to be your late game cleaners, the K over thing when everything's paralyzed, having both means you have less electric or psychic types to do the paralyzing in the first place. Unless you're using Body Swim Armado, but I don't know. It sounds interesting, but I guess we'll have to wait till Generation Jumbo Season 2 to see if that's actually a viable strategy or not. And next off, we have Swellbro. Armado can use Sword Stance, uh, good for him. I'm pretty sure Surf will do a lot of damage no matter what. In fact, I'll even say even without Amnesia, Swellbro is still an unwinnable matchup. It's no one's surprised. No one is surprised at all. Didn't bother with the Jolteon or Gengar replays. Maybe Jolteon, but I feel like the Jolteon replay is basically summed up when you go to the Zapdos one. Before that, we have Starmie. And there's only one move that Armado really cares about with Starmie, and that is Surf. Sword into Armado against most Starmie sets can do a lot of damage. But Surf somehow does over 60%. Would not have expected that, but maybe you'll have a reason to use Surf Starmate more often. But probably not, because even though Armaldo, good typing, can check stuff, it's also not like super overpowered or overwhelming. Just like with Tyranitar, it's really good, but I would definitely argue that it's pretty fair as well. I never feel like it's gonna be too much for the meta to handle. Even if you get really lucky or you get Armando in a good position, I feel like SCO trainers or even decent trainers can still find a way to get around it. But that is just my opinion. And last but not least, we got Zapdos. Unlike some other rock types, I feel like Zap or not Zapdos, Armando like, doesn't do as good as Tyranitar. But compared to some other checks I've seen, it's not that bad. It can two-shot Zapdos. And I guess now that I think about it, Jolteon might be better than Zapdos in the matchup because it crits more often and it isn't with the Rock Slide. 
But then again, it's still weak to Earthquake, and it's a Jolteon, so I'm definitely not seeing it survive three Earthquakes from literally anything. So maybe for both, they should both be could go either way. Uh, speaking of which, here is the tier list. And, yeah, it's weird. Like, for a tier list like this, you would not expect our model to be good. But I think it is. But I do think it's kind of like Lapras, where even though it's bulky, good defensive typing, because you have no reliability, not reliability, I mean recovery, that means that you get taken on like one thing, basically, but then you kind of struggle against literally anything else that's taken out. So that's why I still think Rest is the best set for Omoto. But feel free to disagree with me if you want. Tomorrow I'm going to do Vespa Quinn, and that, I think, will be very interesting. I'm gonna be real though, I had a fourth bug type in mind, but I completely forgot what that is. And I don't want to scroll through the Discord to look for it, because we talked about this... I think in January? By the way, you should join the Discord server. We have a lot of fun over there. There's more than just Pokemon. If you like Minecraft, Yu-Gi-Oh, Terraria, or anything else, we're bound to have that there as a, its own dedicated channel. Not to mention, give it like a month, maybe even just a few weeks, uh, if that, and we'll be having another tournament. So that should be fun as well. So thank y'all for watching. This is Groundback, and until next time, I look forward to hearing from you.